hello and welcome to another trip report a new one i really excited about to show you and this on the combined sleeper train and night intercity that runs between the netherlands and switzerland in this video i will show you the railway station of utrecht central if you're not interested in that and you just want to know more about the train and to see the train that runs between here and switzerland at least the sleeper train because there's also a day train um, then you can skip to this part of the video but for the rest i will show you this railway station what is utrecht central the train doesn't start here though it starts in amsterdam i will show you the train um, and i will tell you something about ticket fares i hope you like this video if you do so give me a thumbs up on youtube and if you like to see more train related videos and you haven't subscribed to my channel yet please subscribe to my channel for now let's roll the intro right next to the railway station of utrecht central you find this gym of train more but if you prefer more trains you can go to the railway station that's right at the other side of the square apart from that a big shopping mall called Hoogkatreine is also more or less integrated within this railway station. A couple of years ago everything here has been renewed and I do have to say it has been improved a lot over here. Before this was not really the place to go to and right now well, you find lots of shops and it's actually a nice place. If you're walking from the railway station to the city center you have to walk through this mall. If you just want to go for shopping, I personally strongly prefer the city center. It's way more authentic and personally I really like the old historical streets. By the way, I did not record this all in one go, as you can see, because I'm switching between day and night time. Something that's absolutely worth mentioning if I'm talking about Utrecht Central Railway Station or the bicycle underground parking facilities. One of these parking facilities is the biggest parking facility for bikes in the world with a capacity of about 12,500 bikes that can be parked over here. This is really impressive and within this area you'll find special zones where you can drive bikes and special zones for pedestrians. This place hosts three floors and you can cycle in from the city center straight away. Right next to the bicycle racks you can see the number of available places. And of course you also find bike sharing programs. Like for example the Ovefiets. This is the bike sharing program of the Dutch state owned railway company NS. A couple of months ago I also took some Donkey Republic bike sharing bikes from here. What I like about those bikes is that you can park them literally anywhere in the city. But I didn't saw them anymore. And actually, I didn't saw that much Bonky Republic bikes anyway anymore in the city. But at least, there are lots of Ovefiets bikes. Directions within the bike parking facility are given very well. And also information about departing trains is given at several spots. As a matter of fact, from this underground parking facility for bikes, you go to the tracks straight away. Over here there are some information screens about departing trains, traffic information and a vending machine for train tickets, screens that will provide a lot of passenger service information and most important access to the tracks. From here you can enter all tracks so you don't have to go out and go to the main hall before you can go to the platform. These tunnels are also perfect for if you need to change trains you need to go to another platform. But before we discover what's inside the railway station, let's find a little bit more of what you can find around the railway station and mainly focus about getting here or leaving from here with local public transport. Right under the railway station at the part of the city center, between the bicycle parking grass and the railway station building, you will find an underground bus stop and there's also a tram stop over here. This is for the tram that will go to the Uithof area. There are two tram stops and you find them at both sides of the railway station. By the way, if you're traveling with a public transport smart card for in the Netherlands, so OV chip card, please make sure you have to check in and out at the platform and not within these trams. Passenger service information is given very well, both on these old fashioned paper timetables, but also you find live departure screens and directions are given very good as well. Both at the part where you find the buses and the trams, but also within the main railway station building, 
there are vending machines for local tickets for public transport. At the other side of the railway station there's also something like this, but there's no tram stop included in the bus stop from there. That tram stop is a little bit more at this side. Just make sure if you have a bus or tram from here that you will go to the right part. To go to the other side of the railway station, of course you can do this via the main hall, but there's also this bridge that is linking the two sides of the railway station with each other. From here on you have a good view on the tracks and like you find at a lot of Dutch railway stations, there are also some taps where you can tap drinking water to reduce plastic. At the middle there's an entrance to the railway station building and here we are at the other side, the Jabus side. side. This is where you find a big fair and there's also, just like at the other side, a parking grass facility for bikes. Included in this facility there's also a bike repair shop and of course you also find the OVFEEDS, the bike sharing program of the Dutch state owned railway company. At the side, at this part of the railway station, there's a pick up and drop off zone for railway passengers by car, a taxi stand and an international long distance bus stop. For now let's go into the main hall of this railway station again. Something I really liked that was located at the side was this book exchange. Basically you can bring one book and take one book from here. I just really like this. At the side of the railway station there are two ticket and service points. One is only for local public transport and national trains and another one is for both international trains, national trains and local public transport. An exchange office is located right next to this point where you can't go to for international trains. As you maybe already noticed this railway station does have access gates. At all points where you find the access gates, just outside of these access gates there are vending machines for train tickets. Near the biggest entrances and exits there are some information points as well. You can open these gates with the use of a public transport smart card. And if you have an e-ticket you have a QR code on the ticket to open the gates. This also counts for most international train tickets. In that case just make sure you will use the gates that do have the glass on top and do have the scan ticket symbol on it, otherwise this doesn't work. For now let's focus on the most important part of this railway station, at least if you're catching an international train or if you're changing trains at this railway station. And that's the main course. This is pretty straightforward. Within this area you find a lot of shops and information about departing trains from here is given very well. At the middle you find this big screen, but of course there are also lots of smaller screens that will host information about departing trains from this railway station. This includes some screens that will host information about local public transport and you will find these old fashioned fixed timetables at several spots within the main hall. Directions are given very clear, it's almost impossible to miss the right platform. Apart from that, what facilities can be found where or marked very well and there are some spots over here in the main hall where you can have a sit. Both at the point where you find a lot of shops, but also a little bit more at this side and over here you have a great view on the railway track. Toilets can be found at several spots within this railway station, but also within the main hall. And of course you find a lot of shops over here. So if you want to buy something for your journey, food, whatever, you can find it all over here. And if you can't find it here, you can go to the shopping mall right next to the railway station. Within the middle of the hall there's an other information point. At last there's an upper deck right above the point where you find most shops. Over here there are several restaurants and bars, but unfortunately all of them were closed at the moment I recorded this. There's also a toilet over here and you find the locker room that might be most important and especially if you arrive here from another country and you take a sleeper train and you want to drop your luggage before you can go to your accommodation. There is no first class lounge in this railway station. Time to move on to the platforms. Before you enter the platform, big screens will host information about what platform can be found where and a screen will host information about the first departure from there. There are escalators, elevators and of course stairs towards the platform. On domestic Dutch trains you won't find dining cars, but at most platforms you find a kiosk, a very small convenience store. Apart from that, a vending machine for snacks and drinks can be found at most platforms as well. For the international trains that do depart from Utrecht Central Railway Station, there's a digital display that will host the train composition. 
I'll get back to reservations later on in the video when I tell you also a little bit more about ticket fares. The letters will refer to letters you can find at the platform, so you know what carrots will be more or less where at the platform. For example, K you can see over here. Apart from that, obviously, there are also big screens at the platform that will host route information as well about the first upcoming departure and the stations where these trains do call. Before I will show you the interior of these trains, let's have a look at the exterior. These trains are locomotive hall trains and until the railway station of Frankfurt there will be a Dutch locomotive. From there on there will be a switchback and there will be a Swiss locomotive for the rest of the journey. At the railway station of Basel SBB, what is the first big railway station in Switzerland, this train will be split up in two sections. One section will stay there and the other part will continue its way to Zurich in Switzerland. Both at the front and at the back of the train you will find two carriages that are the sleeper train. There's one couchette and one sleeper carriage at both ends. Obviously not all parts continue to Zurich like I mentioned a bit earlier. So if the sleeper train to Zurich has been fully booked you can always try to book to Basel. For now, let's go back for a couple of weeks at the railway station of Amsterdam Central Station. I took this train from there, because over there this train was not that full yet and it was easier for me to fill. I was also able to sneak in the sleeper carriages. The German intercity carriages only have second class and at those carriages you will find digital displays at the site that will host route information. For all the other carriages you will just find paper displays. There's one first class carriage that's a Swiss carriage of the intercity part and an extra yellow line above the entrance doors does exactly indicate that you find the first class over there. And of course the two sleeper carriages that are the night train. So the sleeper and the couchette carriage that are at the front and the back of the train. For the tour let's start off with the intercity part and I will start with the Swiss carriages. Like I mentioned at the side at the door you'll find a paper that will host the route information and the train number. Also the carriage number has been written over there. In these Swiss carriages seats do face each other. You'll find a lot of space for luggage in the overhead luggage racks. But because the seats all do face each other, between the back ends of the seats you can also store quite a lot of luggage. At the side of these windows you will find sunscreens. These carriages only come in an open compartment. Between the seats you will find an armrest and right below that there is a power plug, actually two. At the side you will find a table you can fold out to make it slightly bigger and right under the table there is a small garbage can. For the aisle seats you can find a fold out table in the seat. Well these tables are actually quite steady. For the intercity part a reservation is not always included in your tickets. You will find these displays at the side where information about reservations can be put into. You cannot block more seats than what you have reserved because if someone is not showing up for a reserved seat, the seat will be available to other passengers of course. At the very end of the train between the compartments you will find a space where you can park bikes and winter sports, things like skis and snowboards. Remember, if you take your bike on these trains, it's obligated to make a bike reservation. Within the open Swiss compartment, some spaces are especially designed for people with mobility problems, so basically traveling in a wheelchair. And you also find a special toilet for people with disability problems. And also, that can be turned into a nursery space for babies. As you can see, this way you have some extra support if you want to use the toilet. The toilet is pretty spacious in general. And if you pull this out, you can turn it into a nursery space for babies. Ideal for traveling with young kids. Close to this point, the layout of the second class carriage is a little bit different. And also accessible for people in a wheelchair. At the other end of this carriage, there's some extra space for bikes or luggage. At the end of these carriages, you will find LED screens that will host basic route information. Although they were not working during this trip. There is one first class carriage in these trains, at least for the intercity part, and the first class comes in a 2 by one configuration. It's basically the same as in the second class, but the seats are a little bit more comfortable and you have more space. There's a table at the side with a garbage can, you'll find a sunscreen, something you will find here but won't find in the Swiss second class carriages or reading lights. 
and of course you will also find power plugs at the same spot as in the second class. The aisle seats do have a fold out table and for luggage well, it's the same thing. You find a lot of space in the overhead luggage racks but you can also store a lot of luggage between the back ends of the seats. If you have the solo seats you will find power plugs at the side of the train. And information about reservations has been displayed at these things at the side. It's not digital, so they will put it in manually in the first class over here. Well, this basically counts for all Swiss carriages. For now, let's take a look at the second class carriages of the German state-owned railway company DB. And right after that, I will show you the sleeping and the couchette carriages. So basically the night train part. At the beginning of these German carriages, you'll find a small screen that will host basic route information and the train number. There's one part of these train that's in the German carriages where you'll find uh, some compartments and over here you find some family and toddler compartments. They were closed during this trip. The conductor will only open them for people traveling with children or with toddlers. Because this is a night in the city, this is otherwise quite a popular spot. And the rest of the second class, well, it's basically the same. It comes in a 2x2 two two configuration. And this is how the regular toilets look like in these carriages. Pretty fine, nothing special. Because most seats over here do come in an airline style composition, there's less space for luggage between the back ends of the seats. So you find these extra racks for luggage at the end of the compartments. At the side of the seats you'll find the seat numbers, and they are displayed within the luggage racks as well. Where you can store also quite a lot of luggage by the way. Remember, these are long distance trains, so people just take more stuff with them on these trains than on regular commuter trains. Like I mentioned, in these German carriages most seats do come in an airline style or long distance bus composition, but you will find some seats facing each other with a table in between. Over here there's quite a big table. That's actually quite nice I have to say. At the side you will find a garbage can within these tables. Between the seats you will find one power plug per two seats. Right below the seat there is a handle you can use to put the seat a little bit forward or backwards. And at the side there is a handle you can use to recline the seat. So basically put the back a little bit more to the front or the back. If I recline these seats I still have enough leg space. For the airline style composition seats, there's a fold out table in the seat in front of you, there's one garbage can between the seats and you also find a magazine rack in front of you. At the overhead luggage racks of course you find the seat number but integrated within these luggage racks you also find a reading light. Within the German carriages free Wi-Fi is available. This doesn't only provide an internet connection but it's also an onboard entertainment system. If you go to the website iceportal.de, you will get to a system where you find lots of podcasts, books, newspapers, etc. you can read. And there's also live route information you can find at that website. This doesn't work by the way if you're using a VPN. You can still go online using a VPN though. For now let's take a look at the sleeping part for this train. Because personally I really prefer to travel this way if I'm going all the way to Switzerland. These are a little bit older carriages and they are not being owned by the ÖBB, what is the owner of the brand Nightjet. This is simply because ÖBB doesn't have enough running stock anymore. You will find the couchettes compartments. These can only be booked for 4 people, but well, officially they fit up to 6 people within these couchette compartments. Over here you find some blankets if you have a ticket booked for this. And these tickets always do include a reservation. There's a small onboard menu. Over here you can buy some snacks and drinks. And if you're sitting in the intercity part, you can buy some snacks and drinks at the stewards for these carriages. It's very basic though, but it's nice that they have something you can buy. A small breakfast is included if you're traveling in one of these carriages. So both in the couchette and in the sleeper carriages. Even though the UBB doesn't own these carriages, they have modernized these carriages a little bit and I do have to say they look quite good. You find a small reading light that's not working if the main light is on, like at this moment. Right above the entrance door you can find the switch for the lights and right above that there's some space for luggage. Right below the lower bunks you have some more space for luggage. 
this is how the tortoise looks like in these trains. Nothing really special, everything works and that's most important. Within these carriages there's no special washing sink area. The carriage numbers and basically the bed numbers can be found outside of these carriages, just at the right or left hand side of the door. And within these doors you find curtains by the way, to filter out the lights. The numbers 1 and 2 are always the lower beds, 3 and 4 the middle and 5 and 6 the upper beds. Water bottles are included and at this side you will find a power plug with some USB plugs as well. Right above that there's a very small garbage can and a very small table. At the moment of recording you can only book this for 4 people and you can book them mixed or for women only. Time to move on to the sleeper accommodation. Outside you will find the cabin number and the bed numbers. These accommodations can host up to 3 people. These compartments can be booked private but also shared. If you book this shared it will be based on men and women separately. Above the washing sink there is some space for luggage and of course you find a washing sink. Over here there is a power plug but this power plug only works if you open the washing sink and the light goes on. Right next to it you find a closet and within this closet there is also a stair for the upper beds. The comfort level over here is a bit better than in the couchettes I showed you earlier. If you stay in one of these accommodations you get a small towel, some slippers, some snacks and drinks and that's basically it. Also here breakfast is included. There are no compartments with end suite shower and toilets within these trains and there's also no shared shower at the hallway. However, at the hallway you will find two toilets within these accommodations. There will be other sleeping carriages eventually. These here are over 60 years old, but they're actually still quite fine. The intercity carriages are newer, but personally I would not like to travel in one of these if I go all the way to Switzerland. The lights will not be dimmed and these are open carriages, so if someone at the other end of the carriage is making a lot of noise, well, it will interrupt you immediately if you try to get some sleep. Personally, I was really happy that they were selling some snacks and drinks at the sleeping carriages, so I could drink some beer during this trip. Now I'm doing a train tour anyway. Maybe I should include the sector like G of March or Elbow Test. And I think these switch carriages, well, no, they didn't pass. Before I will tell you something about ticket fares, Below in the description of this video on YouTube you find a link to a map and on this map you find all trip reports I did. The lines do indicate the routes and the train and ferry icons do indicate the railway station and ferry terminal reviews. Of course I'm making more videos so there will be more lines added to this. So I'll tell you something very basic about ticket fares, won't go too deep in this. Um, what I mentioned in the video, the train was split up at the railway station of Basel, so if the section to Zurich has been fully booked and you want to try to book a ticket to Zurich in the sleeper train, just try to book, if, just try to see if you can book the same ticket to Basel and from there on you can travel with an intercity or whatever to Zurich. Um, so this is my general advice. The sleeping carriage is not very big, the, there are only four carriages. Two that will go to base and two that will go to uh, Zurich, so it's not a huge capacity. For the intercity part though, the capacity is huge, it's really huge. Um, and for if you want to go for, for example in the evening from the Netherlands to the Ruhr area in Germany, I think this is a perfect intercity train. Personally, I would not like to travel all the way in those sections to Switzerland. These are open carriages um, and if people well do have a talk in one of these uh, carriages, um, well, it's easy to hear if you're trying to sleep somewhere else. I also had a talk with some guys who went uh, went to winter spots in uh, Switzerland, and um, basically, uh, well, I just had a talk with them. Later on, they came to me, um, and a couple of rows behind me, someone was trying to sleep. Of course, we we did not make an awful lot of sound, but still, you can hear it, and it can be quite annoying. The lights. In my trip, when not being dimmed in the intercity part, um, I don't know if that's normal or not. Um, but Kromwijk, who makes also great train videos, by the way, you should check out his channel. His, it's only in Dutch, though. Well, be in the description of this video. You can find a video of him where he also took the night jets slash intercity that went to Zurich. He also stayed in the intercity part. Um, 
And in his situation, the lights in the carriage were being dimmed. And I think this is something that will be very much appreciated. I also traveled one time with a train hotel that has been unfortunately suspended from France to Portugal in a seating carriage. And back then they also dimmed the lights. And I do have to say, this was actually still quite comfortable. It was better than I expected it. Uh, and this also automatically makes the people will be a bit more quiet. So I think, yeah, if they would do this for a couple of coaches, it would be very much appreciated. Buying first class for the seating carriages, I don't see the advantage of this. There's only one first class carriage and there are lots of second class carriages. So netto, I think in second class, there's much more capacity than in first class. So therefore, I would just advise you to travel second class. Um, well, the seat reservation is not always included if you buy a ticket for the intercity part. This is something you should keep in mind. Uh, so for those trains, um, for those carriages, um, you can just hop on without the seat reservation. If you have an interrail, you can also hop on. But this might also be that, well, if it's full, it's full and some people might have to stand. I don't think this would happen a lot, though. Um, but in some situations, this might happen. And in the Swiss carriages where you face each other and, well, yeah, I mean, you just have less personal space. So therefore, if it would be very busy, I really prefer to travel on the German carriages. Uh, but if it's not that busy and you can have four seats for you or your travel companion, I think the Swiss carriages are a bit more comfortable. Um, I booked from my train, I booked a ticket from The Hague to Igel, what's just before the border with Luxembourg. Not really an obvious route to go to Luxembourg, by the way, but I wanted to make some videos. Um, and in the video from Koblenz to Luxembourg, I explain you more about how I book my ticket. But very basic for both trains, so the night jet and the intercity part, the tickets are based on the demand of passengers. On popular days, when a lot of tickets have been booked, the price might go up. And on quiet days, when there are not a lot of tickets have been booked, um, well, the price will stay lower. And this also counts last minute. I mean, last minute, most tickets have been booked. So the price is in general higher than if you book earlier on. Um, same thing counts for the sleeping carriages. And sometimes staying in the sleeping carriage might be cheaper than in the intercity part or the other way around, because it's these are two trains. And if everybody books the intercity part, well, the price for the sleeping part might stay a little bit lower. So also keep this in mind. And if you book these trains yourself, please make sure if you want to lay down, if you want to sleep at night, don't book the intercity section, but book the night jet section. Um, this is something you really should really keep in mind. Um, yeah, I think that's almost it for this video. Before I really end this video, um, let's take a closer look at the environmental impact if you're traveling by train, car and plane on this route. Of course, trains won't clean the air, but the environmental impact if you're traveling by train is a lot lower than any kind of other motorized transportation. This graph shows the environmental impact if you're traveling by this route on train, car and plane. And since a lot of people go to Switzerland for winter spots, I think it's also in your benefit to travel on a more sustainable way of transportation. I just put up my face mask. It's one o'clock at night. There's nobody over here. I'm right now at the railway station of Koblenz. Um, I will go tomorrow with one of those trains you can see in the background. I don't know if it works that well because my camera doesn't function that well with low light. To Luxembourg. Um, these are regional express trains or local express trains. In that video, I will show you this railway station, Koblenz Hauptbahnhof. I hope you liked this video. If you do so, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more train related videos, subscribe to my channel. I'll go to my hotel and we'll go to bed right now and see you on my next video.